This is a video about some nice books uh, about the moon. Moon is an easy target when you get a telescope. This is the first target you can look at. is available most of the times, even sometimes during the daylight. And when you want to look at it, it's easy to find it with a telescope. As you know, when you get a telescope, the most difficult thing is to find something with it, aiming it at an object. So, uh, Books about the moon are numerous. I have a few of them. I will tell you which one of them are the best if you're, uh, you know, starting just in the astronomy and having received your new telescope. Uh, all, all of these books, some of them are really uh, um, more in detail, like this uh, series of three books, and there is another one also by John Moore, self-published. You can buy it from, uh, I think, Amazon. This is very detailed. And also Luna Cognita. It's very detailed, a little bit complex to use, uh, but uh, it could have been, you know, the paging of it is a little bit difficult. But it's a is an ultimate guide for the moon if you want. Of course, it doesn't include the latest discoveries, and uh, doesn't have that. The easy source for uh, going and observe the moon, the most recent one, is this Moon Gazing. I recommend this book if you. If you want to really uh, an up-to-date, really good uh, book with a lot of maps, this is the book to choose. That's beautiful maps, easy to use, lightweight, and uh, nice. The next one which I recommend to get if you can find it is this concise uh, guide in color, Moon, Mars, and Venus by the uh, this famous uh, Antonin Ruckler. And these are nice maps of the moon. The bigger book of it exists also. That's out of print. And if you find it, uh, anything under £40, that's a real bargain. Above that, that's the usual price of it. This book, I got it for one, two pounds, probably less than a pound. Or four. So I bought two of these. And uh, you can use it with anything. It's a really good guide in detail. And uh, the next book that I recommend if you want to get a good source is A Field Guide to the Stars and Planet by Donald Menzel. This is a book from the 1960s. Donald Menzel was a consultant to many of the U.S. presidents. This book was fascinating for me when I was a kid. You could see the image of the stars, and at the same time, on the image, on the negative image, you can see that they have superimposed all the names and the constellations and the names of the stars and deeper sky objects. This is the ultimate guide if you want. But what was fascinating for me is this moon section of it, which had the moon in the real uh, by a telescope and the negative image of it superimposed on it the names of the craters and the features. This is a really good, you can get it for less than two pounds sometimes. Get this one. This is a comprehensive guide if you start and just use a telescope. This is a really good book. And there are many different versions of it, of, uh, also hardback and softback. And uh, I recommend that one. The third source I highly recommend is this Rise Atlas Mond. It is in German. Doesn't matter. The German names are the same as the international name. names. It's published by Ocolum, which is a publisher in the EU, in Germany, and uh, I think Bresser.com or uh, Telescope Service, uh, Telescope with K, uh, they sell it uh, also in the, um, or you can go to the website of the Oculum and uh, you will find it. This is a really good book. Every, first of all, it has a guide. It has, first, it is waterproof, almost waterproof. I don't recommend to take it to the pool with you, but it's relatively waterproof. What it has, it has segmented the lunar disk into sections. Then, for example, you want to go to see um, number 16. Let's go and see what is number 16. The map is there, enlarged, and you can see Apennine Mountains, Apollo 15 landing site. And then there is details here. You don't need more than a few words in the German to know what is it. But anyway, it's very clear, 240 kilometer. The name of it is Mare Veprom. These are Latin names, so everywhere the same. Langitude and latitude on the moon. 
Um, you can see the qual, qual, I don't know what that means, probably quadrangle. Uh, but the main thing is this feature here. And these are also tiny photographs. This book is out of print. If you can find it, you are lucky. Get it. Get it even if you can get two, get two of it. But if you don't get two, that would be kind of you to let others also have. Another one similar to this from Oculum again in German is this book. Um, less detailed uh, in my opinion than the other one. And less useful but beautiful images. Nothing compares to these German and French books if you can find, you know, um, these kind of books. And another source that I recommend is um, Atlas of the Moon. This is also a good 21st century Atlas of the Moon by Charles A. Wood and Maurice S. J. S. Collins. This is also a good source. It has um, the same features as that one. You have a atlas here which shows you the quadrangles near side and everything on it. Then you go to the page and on that page, this is of course in English again, you can see the details that is named on the moon. I've, I like that. And then some comments about the different features you can see on that part. For example, Aristarchus Plateau. You can see different parts of it here. This this feature, this mountain here, reach, is now enlarged in this one. So really useful. And this is the cobra's head and the snake in part, Short, Shortinger Valley, I think. Shorter's Valley, yeah. This is also a good book. Uh, you find it a lot. It's published in America, West Virginia University Press, $30. Anything around that price to up to £30, I recommend you get it. The next best thing you can have is a lunar globe. If you can't find it secondhand, that's all right in the YouTube or Facebook or anywhere that anybody's selling them. And I bought this one from the Korea, South Korea, and the eBay. And it comes with a beautiful large map and this map also comes with it uh, a pen marker pen and a guide about how to use it a marker pen because you can actually mark on this there are two versions of this with the names in korean and english i wanted without any writing so uh, i chose this one which is really detailed look at the mare orientale so it comes with this lovely map. It comes in a big box. I bought it for eighty pound, but with the delivery, everything became one hundred ten pound or something like that, or one hundred thirty pound. I don't remember exactly. Anyway, that but that is that is good. That's thirty centimeters. They have for the moon also. Sorry, for the Mars also can get that, and I think for a few other planets like Mercury or probably uh, Pluto. Anyway. And this is good, it turns around, you can do everything with it, you know. I don't recommend writing on it, but uh, it's beautiful having having it with you in your, you know, even for a display. Um, Hatchfield Photographic Atlas, if you can find it, I bought it for £10 or less than £10, £6, £8, something like that, in the second hand bookshop. Uh, good, but very old and dated now. We have, as you've seen, we have better guides with the actual you know this kind of naming of the lunar features is very outdated uh, difficult even to uh, identify anything with it but anyway it's a book if you can find it very cheap get it also uh, a portfolio of lunar drawings that gives you an idea how to can make lunar drawings I don't recommend it if you are not really advanced in this or you're not interested in drawing it you can use your mobile phone to photograph the moon I've done a lot really good results and uh, Lunar Atlas is also good, Dins Dinsmore at Alter, um, let me show you. But finding it uh, in a good condition is difficult. Also, it's a very weird way of the, you know, presenting the thing. You don't find your way around easy. Where is on the moon is this going to describe? And there is no explanation on the images what is what you are seeing. So, uh, it's by Dover, so if you find a second-hand cheap, really get it, but otherwise, no. Another book is the Atlas of the Lunar Terminator, out of print, Cambridge University Press. Probably, 
you will use it visually when you're observing, for example, the very early crescent moon. That's useful, all those ones. The CCD images uh, that you see here are belonging to the 1990s, so they're quite outdated. But if you can find it at a good price, just buy it. Um, I bought it around £40, I think, or something like that. The books by, the books of the moon, on the moon, by Patrick Moore and the moon by how to observe it by Peter Grego also is good. There's a French book also. I don't have it here. I'll have to bring it next time. That is also good. That's a French book also. But it's written in it, uh, translated in, in, in English. This book, The Moon, by Michael Schwar Karlovich, uh, from, uh, is a beautiful, pretty book. You know, it has lots of lovely images. It's nice to look at these images and enjoy it, you know, different cultural aspects of the moon also. Uh, this is nice, very cheap. You can get it for probably as little as two, three pounds. And the next one, which is I really recommend it, I love it. The full moon is the how the human explored the moon. And as you can go through this book, paging through it, all these archived images of the Apollo are here. You can open them. I let me tell us your secret. I have bought several copies of this book. There is a large version of it. I got the large version also. First one was the large version, and you can frame this, cut some of the images and frame them. Beautiful thing to frame. And it is really good, it is really nice, it has a lot of information. Every every picture you see here also has a caption at the end. In the larger version, the caption uh, comes with the uh, explanation under it. In this one, uh, it's a tiny caption at the end, as you can see here without the image, relevant image. So, really nice book. Pretty book, very cheap. You can get it now very cheap because people are selling it a lot. It's mostly, you know, as a coffee table book, as we call it. And so these are some of the nice, uh, pretty books that, uh, nice books that you can use. Very good for observing some of them. Some of them are nice to have it on the table. The globe is essential if you can find the globe, that is really good. Gives you a 3D idea of what is on the moon. Doesn't matter how old it is, they're all good. And this book also, I forgot to mention, this is also a good book. Uh, expensive if you want to buy it. But I don't recommend it if you just, uh, it's your first book. If you find it cheap, get it. Otherwise, don't bother because there are better books than this. Uh, the difference between this book and the other books is that some of the pages of it has an overlay. So this is the moon, as you can see here, like that. Uh, it's, it's probably a 12, 12 or 11 day old moon. Then the overlay, which is the cellophane, comes on top of it, acetate, and shows the names of the features. And now we have books, uh, even the Donald Melzel, that older book shows that better without being so cumbersome and big. But anyway, it's a pretty book. You can have it if you want. Uh, by Terry Legault and uh, Serge Bernier, French originally. Nice book. If you can get it cheap, under £40, £30, that's good. So these are all the books that uh, you can have and you can enjoy when you have a new telescope.